You just press play on the Last Breath Hunt cast, home of the Huntroversy. We're here to entertain, educate, and engage. And in case you didn't know, you only live once. But if you do it right, once is enough. Don't waste it. Okay, everybody, welcome to episode number 59 of the Last Breath Hunt Cast. I'm one of your hosts, Grant, and right next to me on my left, in case you guys are viewing this podcast on YouTube, is Garrett. How are you doing tonight? Hello, everyone. And across the table from me and to Garrett's left, we have a special guest tonight, and you guys will be able to tell if you're watching the video version of the podcast on YouTube that we are no longer in our tax, uh, our podcast studio, but instead we are in a taxidermy studio, which brings us to our special guest of the night, Wayne Tompkins. How you doing, Wayne? I'm doing good. How about you guys? Excellent. Happy to be here. And if you guys can take a look at the inside of his shop, I mean, it it's impressive how clean it is to me. The first time I came in here, I'm like, wow, this is an extremely clean shop, how organized it is. Because as a type A person myself, I respect like when I see good organization. So Uh, kudos to you for that. So this is just a reminder for those of you guys that are tuned in to our podcast that you can listen to a new episode every Monday morning, brand new on iTunes, Spotify, Libsyn, or you can watch on YouTube every Monday. So our guest is Wayne Tompkins of Talk Tompkins Taxidermy out of Muscatine, Iowa. Um, So we're not going to do a 30 second introduction today because this whole episode is all about the guy, the man sitting right across from me um, with Garrett and I, and that is Wayne. So since this episode is all about Wayne, we're going to get into our first topic of the, of the episode. And that is to have you, Wayne, you've shared the story with Garrett and I, which I thought it was really cool, but why exactly did you take the leap and start Tompkins Taxidermy full-time? Because you've been doing it for how many years? Um, over 30. I've been doing it for over 30 years. Um, well, what happened, I, you know, I've, I've always wanted to have my own shop and, and do that, but I've always just done it on the side. Um, I was taught by a former world champion, you know, many, many years ago. I got deer and raised them for eight years to study, competed, did really well, but I just never had the nerve. I worked at H&I. I had 30 years in. I just, you know, I was just scared. I just didn't know. Yeah. Um, well, I had a cousin that was was dying, and they told me if I wanted to see him alive, I needed to come see him. So, I went to see him, and they said he was unresponsive. They had changed his clothes. He never opened his eyes or nothing. They didn't think he had much time. So I went to see him, and when I started talking, he opens his eyes and he looks at me. So we're all kind of looking at him, wow. like, what's going on? Yeah. You know, nobody knew what to say. And then he starts talking just like normal. And he says, oh, the deer you did for me and the one you did for my grandson, I think are the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Everybody starts crying. Everybody starts bawling. Mm -hmm. This was on a Saturday. Okay. I came home, talked to my wife, and I told her, I said, I think somebody's trying to tell me something. I went into work after 33 years. I went into work on Monday and told them I quit. I'm going to do taxidermy full time. Um, I, in my head, I had a lot of big ideas. There was a lot of stuff to overcome, but I wanted, I knew, I knew we could do it. I wanted to build this new shop. You know, I wanted a lot of things to happen and, and everything's fell right into line. It's been pretty incredible. I mean, awesome. So, so you've been mounting taxidermy for 30 years, kind of on the side, but then when did you take the leap? Was it last year or the year before that? Two years ago two years ago. So in yep. 2018, you built this shop and started. I built this shop. I, I quit my job in 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, did it continue to do it out of my house just like I was doing it for a year. Yep. And then I built this shop last year. And then from here on, we've just been, it's just been incredible. Everything's working great. And that's, I mean, don't be humble. Now's the time to brag and boast. Let everybody know. I mean, part of building the shop is because the demand was there. I mean, people knew who you were. You had a, a lot of guys that you had done work for. And now it's like you, you took the leap of faith. You needed this space. Yes. Yeah, we did. I mean, I, you, I had no idea. I, I had no idea it would grow so big once I opened the doors. So I, fast. So fast. I was, I was just, I was in awe. I mean, I, I was really humbled. I, I didn't know what to think of it. Yeah. Um, but I knew, I, I knew, like I said, I knew we, we could do a good job. We could do what people wanted, what they needed. We just needed more room, and, and I needed a little bit of help. And that's where I brought on an apprentice, Michael, who's not here with us today. 
He's out at a golf tournament or something, but you'll inter- I'll introduce him yeah, a little later on. Yeah, he said chasing on. women sure. and drinking all kinds of yeah, beers. Yeah, shots yeah. or something. I, he wouldn't really tell me. So. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just said he really had to have the day off. So. Okay. Well, good for him. And yeah. that in and of itself, like the fact that you have another person working full time for you, like there's two of you in here like round the clock yes. whipping out deer heads eight to, like eight yep. to 10 hours a day. Like that's impressive to me too, just because you're like, it's not just like you're dinking around with a side shop, a side job, like in your shed. It's like I built this business and I hired someone, which is a huge expense for a person that's like a business owner yep. to have a full time employee. And so you guys are serious about yeah, churning is, out deer heads. Exactly. This is, I mean, this is what we're doing. And I want everybody to know when somebody kills a big deer, I want our name brought up. I mean, that's what I'm striving for. Not so. just deer. Well, yeah. Boost, yeah, we antelope, can do, elk, yeah. bear. We can do a little bit of everything. Um, deer is my passion. Yep. I love them. I like to chase them. Um, but, yeah, we can do anything. We've tackled all kinds of life-size stuff and small stuff. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Just by the look of the shop here, you've got turkeys in the corner, a rack full of whitetails, fox on some habitat there, a ton of whitetails being mounted up, a huge bull moose that you've killed, Another bull moose on the form. In the background, right? In the background. Caribou, antelope, hog, antelope, antelope, hog, uh, black buck? Black buck. Black buck. Abelina. Yep. I mean, so you can do, you, you're you far reaching well beyond like your Four normal. Four-legged animals. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Forte, right? Yeah, mammals, everything. <clears throat> yep. And it recently snakes. Yeah, we, we catch a few of those every year in Giant Texas. Giant rattlers. This guy's got a set of balls on him like cannonballs, man. Yep. I mean, every freaking year. And we'll get you down there. You'll, uh, you'll go down there once. And they're big. Oh, yeah, they're big. They're big. That's what they're she not said. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> us in Colorado, we, like, run into, like, some, like, two, two and a half foot, like, rattlesnakes. And the guys out there are like, oh, yeah, it's like an average one. No, no, no. Wayne's like, these are, like, five footers, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and big Huge. around. How much do they weigh? I don't know. I never really lipped one to hold it like a bass. <laughs> if, it, if it wouldn't bite, I might uh, try yeah. that. Yeah, holy crap. But so, they're, they're pretty heavy. Um, now, last year, uh, a couple of guys caught five. They had five of them in a five-gallon bucket. Okay. And it was full. Full? And full. Jesus. They had five snakes, and it was full to the top. They couldn't have put another one in there, and it was heavy. That gives me cool. the heat. Five jazz, snakes man. in a five-gallon bucket. Oh, they had a little screw-on lid, though. You know, it wasn't like it was oh, just empty. Jesus, they, go. They're shit. just shooting out of there, yeah. Uh, so I want to dive into, like, the process of when you receive them out because that was something really cool that we got to learn, um, and that is, like, how, how much consideration you take into the eyes and the ears and how much really the hunter or the person bringing you them out has the ability to work with you on that. That's unique for us. We've, you know, we've dealt with several taxidermists in the past just throughout our lives, and usually you drop it off and... You, know. you pick your mount. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you, on your form, I mean, you got you really dive into it yeah, deep. There's, I mean, the, we're, we're really, I don't want to say prolific with whitetails, so it's like it's a shame to just say, I want it turned to the right. Well, you know, first we kind of say, how high is your ceiling? You know, do you, can the head be high? Can the head be low? You know, what do you want there? Um, which way would you like it turned? You can do so much with the expression, with the eyes. You can have him turn one way, look in the same way, so you see whites in the eyes. You can have him look in the other way, like he heard something. Um, same thing with the ears. You know, they're flighty animals. They're always moving them around. Mm-hmm. Um, old school is eyes straight ahead, ears up. Right. We can do that, but if you watch a white tail for like 10 seconds, they're they're moving around and stuff. Oh, yeah. Unless they got you pegged. And you know? then you're. And scared. I don't like to yeah. see that, so <laughs> I try to stay away from that. So. It's, it's just a shame not to be able to do, you know, to, when you come, it's like, where do you want to put it? What kind of expression? How do you want it to look? Where do you want it looking into the room? You, I mean, you can do that. Right. So why not? Why right. wouldn't you? You know? I, I agree. I agree. We just, we've, That's and we cool. haven't had like bad experience, you know, like, but the fact that you, if they choose to, if the hunter or the person has, wants that thought into it. I mean, it, the world's your oyster here at Tompkins. It is. It is. They, you know, they can do whatever they want. Now, a lot of times, people that I've done for in the past will just say, this is where I want to put it. Do your thing. Sure. Okay. Well, that can get you in trouble. Because uh, yeah. from my standpoint, you know, there's one back here on the stand that, that he wanted just a semi-sneak or whatever. Well, it's an open mouth lip curl. Because he's like, Tur- I'm turning you loose. You do what you think looks <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So he's got a whole bunch of them on a wall. This is the last one that's in there. This is the one he needs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but oh, we right can there, do anything. Right there, yeah. 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 So he doesn't, 
maybe don't show that because he don't know that's coming yet. Okay. But okay. he'll love it. So that's a surprise. Yeah, yeah, that's a surprise. <clears throat> surprise, surprise. surprise. So we kind of already got into that a little bit just, you know, from that last question you asked him. But I guess a, a customer that is brand new, because I do want to get all your information out as much as we can in this podcast about your business and about your costs. So that way, everybody listening knows, like, if I take it to Tompkins, these are the things I can expect. And that was the overarching question that I had for you tonight, Wayne, was when a customer who's new to Tompkins that doesn't know you from Adam looks you up, what can they expect when they walk in the door? Uh, they can expect it a professional, you know, like I say, the shop's real clean. Um, we'll do everything we can in our power. This is what we do. It's all about deer. It's all about hunting. Um, we've even went out, you know, somebody's called me and well, I hit one. We've even went out and helped people look for them. I mean, if you're not sure about it, you can come in we'll skin it out here. If we're going to mount it, you know, it's a no brainer. Let's get it done. Right. You know, we don't have to worry about it. it's too short. Something's wrong with it. Um, but when they come, you know, they'll expect it easy in a year, you know, probably around eight months, six, eight months. Wow. Um, the early the season, they'll get it back right away. Later in the season, it's going to be a little bit longer. But, I mean, real timely, that's what we built this for, and that's what we're doing. And so far, we're doing it. I mean, you can see our rack over there is kind of getting sparse. And there was several hundred on there earlier. Right. So yeah. Right. And here we are, you know, shoot couple weeks for season yeah, yeah so that means and the so we'll end, be, those ending whitetails there are still i mean you could still get those deer back to well their, before a year well before even nine months yes. just with the duration of the yeah, illinois and iowa season in about two weeks yeah mm -hmm. i also think it's important to, to tell people wayne like everything happens in house you tan your hides yep. you paint finish dry everything here. everything in house the only thing that we send out is bear rugs Yep. That's it. Everything else is tanned in house. If we're going to mount it, we tan it. And you know what? That's awesome that you just you, you're that honest about it. You know, the, this is what we do, except for bear rugs. You send them out. Yep. I mean, how, not that not that people try to hide behind some of those things, but I don't know that that level of honesty is it strikes a chord with me, and I appreciate it. I think the other cool thing to note too is like anybody can walk in this door, and like the first time we stopped in, you guys just you know we're at a point where you could hang it up or whatever you came like we're normal people like there's yeah. not a stranger that comes through here oh no no you got a beer full of fridge I, or a fridge fridge full of beer yeah and and like dude no we have people stop in all the time yeah yeah we have people stop in all the time and if we're where we can stop hey we're we're all about it yeah you know that's that's what we do so that's what we live for so yeah nobody's so, a stranger so four-legged critters are your bread and butter um, for those of you guys that are listening right now, most likely you're a whitetail fanatic. And yep. if you kill a big buck this year, Wayne, let's talk about your pricing briefly. So your pricing is what for a standard whitetail shoulder mount? It's 550 And like I said, that's designed however you want it. You know, I mean, it's not a, just a cut and dried. You can do it however you want. Um, then an open mouth is, of course, more. It's about 150 more. Correct. Sure. Um, and then, you know, the sky's the limit. You can do anything you want with them. Right, right. right. So the, the yeah. standard guy coming in, getting a, you know, semi-sneak, upright, et cetera, it's 550. Yep. There's a lot of value in that. And that's, uh, I think, another thing that when we first started talking to you, Wayne, like, it's, it's the same level of detail, finish, professionalism on the mount you know 550 is i mean it's there it's not yeah it's not a just a stamped there it slapped is. together right no I, yeah. I put every every deer has its own problems some of them are perfect some of them go together well some of them you know are shot somewhere that's whatever every deer and that's what i told michael every deer that comes in here you might have to spend more time on this and more time on that and that's the way it's going to be right it's not oh we've got so many hours in this it's got to be right it's so you know the deer that go together Maybe I make a little more money because I get them done quicker, but everything fit real nice. Everything went good. The ones that are shot, I got to sew, I got to fix. You know, there's a lot of things that happen to them. Some of them have bad ears, you know, from fighting and stuff. And you just, you have to take your time on it. That's how it works. Right. That's just part of the game. So uh, by now, Grant, I think it's time. Let's let the, the cat out of the bag. <clears throat> sure. Like so the uh, reason ah. we're doing this podcast. So the reason that we're doing this podcast is because we are going to be partnering up with Wayne and Tompkins Taxidermy and his apprentice, uh, his full-time employee, Michael. And this year, 
at our launch party, which we've already booked it for 2021. We were planning for 2020 to be incredible with the Adler Theater and everything like that. Um, but we're going to have our next in-person launch party, coronavirus willing. I would think and hope that within the next 11 months, it would have time to leave us. But we're going to have that on the fourth Friday in July of 2021. And you can use our code, uh, which I'll say in just a second, to get $50 off of any whitetail shoulder mount from tac- Tompkins Taxidermy at our show. So what I just said was you can get a $500 mount, which there's nobody mounting up white tails in our area that not cheap. Not this quality. Not no, this not quality. Like this. No. Right. And you Pick can it up get in it in, in six months if you shoot it at the very latest you can in Illinois and Iowa, like late season. And on top of that, have yep. 1,500 people your peers friends family and everybody in between see it in person yep like to me that's one of the coolest things about the launch party is like Mm -hmm. you know a lot of guys and even myself included we would shoot a deer and or even like matt and jesse with them living a little bit south of us it'll be a long time before i get to see their deer you know and if it wasn't for our friendship i'd probably just see a picture of it well now how many of your like i said your friends and peers your work buddies and acquaintances get to see it show it off at the Adler in front of 1,500, 2,000 people. Yeah. You're like, that guy shot that big-ass buck last year. Like, yeah. damn. Like, you, yeah. Okay, I get it. Pictures didn't do that one justice, you know? Right. Yep. How many deer do you see in person? You're like, whoa, that, your pictures did not make him look that massive or that wide or that tall. Yeah. Yep. And so that's, that's kind of a really cool thing about having it at the show. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely. only 15 slots. Yep. So get so- your deer in quick. Yeah, so there's 15 slots, and if you use the code BFD, which stands for Big Fucking Deer 21, you guys can mention that to Wayne, and you guys will be able to get that code through us. But again, it's BFD21, and you can give that to Wayne, and you will be a slot, one of the 15 people that are your deers hanging up at our launch party. So to give you an idea, the last... Uh, launch party that we had we had about a thousand people at our last launch party in person and we had what did we have 14 shoulder mounted whitetails there plus the ones we shot yeah it was 14 fans had brought or listeners or whoever had brought them in to display and then we had our our five or six yep we had we had four deer heads of our own and then jesse had shot that banded turkey oh yeah so it was like a pretty cool show yeah i mean and literally like you watch the flow of traffic they'd come in they get, get beer. beer, go up, w- walk through all the deer, come down, get another beer, go find their You got to have priorities. Oh, yeah. You got to have oh, priorities. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. We're excited. I, I can't tell you, Wayne. Seriously, like, we're Grant and I coming over here to do this wholeheartedly, man. We're so excited and yeah, ready for this. We are, too. We, are, we think it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a good partnership, and I think... I think everything will just explode. I think it'll be phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, and if you guys haven't seen already, they do a big buck contest at Easy Living, and you do so much for, like, just the surrounding community and people you've talked about, how, like, who, what what taxidermist goes and helps track a deer for a customer or a client? Not many that I know of. And the fact, like you said, bring your deer in here. If you have a deer of a lifetime or or you've never caped out a big deer, you've got a great big garage door, you got a winch and a floor drain. Yep. You'll skin it out right here for them. Yep. Show and then them they how don't to have do to worry right. about it. Yeah. There's nothing that breaks my heart more than somebody. I had a guy come this year, he had a 190 inch buck <sighs> and it was cut too short. Yeah. And he said, I just didn't know how. And I'm, I mean, I almost wanted to cry for him. Yep. So. Yeah. I mean, we've, we had, we've heard a similar horror stories. There was a kid that brought a phen- like 180 some inch deer, this, this kid, his kid shot it the day after first gun season with his bow before school and this thing was huge just massive and his dad bless bless heart you know caped it out but it was you know like probably five or six inches short Mm. you know and and some guys don't understand how much shoulder and back you really need on a cape right um and it's the backside, not the belly side that always seems to get cut short you know like oh i got the neck we're good. Yep. And exactly. this poor kid, it was still, you know, he was able to get his deer mounted, but he had to, he couldn't use that cape. Yep. And it's a little bit of an element to that, yep. to making that whole thing come together. It is. Yep. And I see it. I see it every year. Oh, two I or bet three you times. Yeah. It, it just breaks my heart. Yeah. So. And your, your cape situation, you need to adjust that. I think you're, you're, you're too nice. Well, 
we'll see what this year brings. I've been pretty fortunate. I have a whole bunch of hunters that that give me capes every year. And so we've been able to get a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, if that gets hard to do or something, something might change. But but we, we try to do everything we can for the hunter. I mean, that's what I, we I try to do. do. And to pull the curtain back a little bit, for those of you guys that are listening right now, what they're talking about, guys, is that a standard taxidermist, if you jack up the cape and bring them a short cape or a cape with holes in it that they just can't work with or for whatever reason the cape is spoiled, typically they're going to charge you an additional fee for an extra cape, for a new cape for your deer to be mounted, right. to be used. But Wayne has never charged anybody for for a cape and you provide those free so well that's again a really cool like supply applicable you know yeah as long as i have them and then that's the thing i've been pretty fortunate with people you know bringing them i've got a lot of dedicated hunters that killed some big bucks well that's just that's just another star on the board for you man another feather in your hat i mean we've talked with other taxidermists that literally they price out their capes according to like the age of the deer mm-hmm. yeah you know like yep. baseline is like usually a three-year-old buck is where you want to start with but then a four or five-year-old one you know there's a 50 dollar adder for every year inch of neck. yeah because so they're so much harder on, to get yeah tack on another 200 250 dollars onto your mount cost like that right but you know i mean i want to succeed i want this business to do well and you are. i don't ever expect to be a rich man yeah i want to be happy doing what i'm doing i know and that's that's what it's all about that's what it's all about and that's man. what i told michael we pay the bills we're doing what we're doing we're loving it we're winners yeah that's all that matters so well yeah. should we get into some of his pet peeves now oh, uh well. sure um we just brought one of them up <laughs> yeah uh before we get into his pet peeves i just wanted to go over two things that impressed me the first time that i walked in here um thing number one is that rack that for again for the those of you that are listening uh watching this on youtube right now so that rack that's the big rack rack the the big rack rack. up there big rack the big rack rack. yeah yeah and that thing will hold how many deer wayne it'll hold about 300 and so i asked wayne last year how many deer did you do and how many deer did you do and including like you know all your 2019 bucks how many did you do uh how many did you have on that rack not probably around 250 so 250 whitetails it is one month as of today when we're recording this it is one month before season and he's got what 10 15 left on there well that's it all that i've really got are the ones on this side there's one two three four five six because the ones the little ones on the other side are mine and some of my buddies and then the ones up here ones people just brought last week one is a an old mount somebody did i've got a Redo, put a, redo, put another yep. cape. Sure. And the other one's a mule deer a guy killed in like 2000, and I bought a, a mule deer cape, and he wants it done. So that's kind of like starting over, you know, yeah, right, for right. the next go round. That's, that's, that's impressive to me because I know of many taxidermists that are a year, 18 months, 24 months out. And uh, at, at that point, if you're not a diehard whitetail hunter, you know, and you don't know the buck like intimately, like trail camera history or history in general with encounters or stuff, you may have forgotten. Like, at, at least there's some people that I know that are like, I forgot what my deer looks like because it's been yeah. like two years. Dude. And it's impressive to me that you whipped up about 300 deer, probably 400 animals total just last year. And we are still a month out from season. The second thing that impressed me is that call board right over there right next to the rack rack um so that's impressive to me because you and michael take notes of who called you guys while you were at work and of who you did or did not call back yet before the end of the business day and you told me that and i was like blown away by that so you will you know while you're in here you may not catch every phone call but you call them back by the end of the business day and that's awesome customer service yeah and you can you can stop by here we're here monday through friday and you know there's things we do during the season we do a lot of running you know like say we're up at easy living doing stuff we like to mind the store when they're all out deer hunting you know we figure that's part of the game you know they they want to all deer hunt illinois and iowa seasons aren't aren't lined up yeah. aren't lined up so we go take care of the store we want to have a big sale and stuff todd never lets me but you know we try <laughs> um but, you know, so, so during the season, there's times when I'm kind of busy, but I always will get back to you, you know. But from, from tell the season, we're here every day. So yeah. Monday through Friday. Here's so. the thing. I'm an impatient person. I'll tell you right now. It's amazing I'm a deer hunter because, like, uh, 
you know, you, 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 you shoot a big buck and like the excitement there. And it's like, it's almost sure short lived because if you're, you know, if you're a pretty standard guy, I bet like after you shoot a deer, most cases you'll probably have the, the head and the cape here within three or four days. A lot of guys, some may cape them, but very, very few really pull it off of the face. So they right. have to bring it in unless they have it in a freezer or something. But it's like, you know, you, you let go of it and then you're like, oh, man, I want to, you know. It's a trust yeah. issue. It, it is. is. And I hear horror stories every year. Of people have been burnt. So that's we're 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 we are doing our best to make sure everybody when they walk out of here smiling, oh, yeah. happy and they're coming back. Well, that's, that's what, what I you, want. One of the cool things too, another cool thing is like when he posts a round of deer on his social media, it's like, thank you for trusting us with your trophy. Yep. I mean, it is. It's, it's trust. a trust. It's a bond. It's it's something it's way more intimate than like dropping your bow off to get a peep site served in sorry todd or something like that you know exactly but this is like there is a memory that's tied and fixed to that animal that i would say every hunter can tell you where they killed and how it happened and all this and you're preserving it for for them and their kids and everybody else to see it yep yep it's exciting and i enjoy that part some of the some of the some of my biggest thrills or whatever are when a kid comes in and brings one oh yeah and they come and pick it up and they they you couldn't slap the smile off their face that to me i never got that in a factory no that seeing that and making somebody is happy and it's like you know that that makes me happy that's why you're doing it so all right um pet peeves yeah pet, pet peeves. peeves so what's your biggest pet peeve and rant what? brother my biggest pet peeve is people cutting them too short if you don't know how to do it, call. We'll come out. I mean, I've even went out and skinned them out for you. Yeah. You know, you, if you can't get it here, I can come to you. Um, but if you don't know how, don't get that knife out. Sure. Because you know, you're going to do some damage. Damage quick. Yeah. And 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 then the other thing is, like he's like Gary said, everybody is proud of their trophy. You know, you need to take care of that trophy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you got the hard parts over. You know, you've hunted it, you've scouted it, you've shot it. You can't drive it around in your truck and show all your buddies for three days if the weather's warm. You no. got to take care of it. Yeah. You got to get it somewhere. And we do have a, a cooler too, by the way, that any of our customers can use anytime. You guys are welcome to. If it's hot out, you want to get that deer taken care of. So get it in the cooler. I mean, get it taken care of. Sure. So it, there's no sense in letting it go to waste. You know. Gotcha. Now, what about like I've I've often wondered, you know, do do people say? nicks happen or this or that i mean pet peeves as far as a customer comes in and starts to like make claims or accusations is that a pet peeve or is that more of like just some ignorant dude i've never had that happen really never had it happen that's awesome no the, the only complaint that i have ever had i had one probably 15 years ago and the the fella said he wished he would have had his ears turned different sure and I said, well, I ask you which way you wanted them. Uh -huh. And I mean, you've seen my sheet. I yep, write it man. on there. That was, that's the only complaint I've had. Really? Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty it. good that's track all you got record. For pet then. Peeves. I figured there'd be some. No, just the knives. And all, you know, the old wives tell, oh, you got to slit the throat. Oh, don't do that. Oh, geez. We'll spank you if you come in here with one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. Uh, the funniest thing I saw is, is, you know, coyotes get to them sometimes. Literally, I had a guy bring a half a buck in here last year. The coyotes had got to the back end. He took a chainsaw and cut it right down the middle. No way. And he come carrying the front half in. Yeah. With the legs and everything? Everything. They had the legs and everything. He's carrying it in. The back half is cut off. Whoa. Yeah. So I've seen some, I've oh, seen some seen good some ones. You've seen some stuff. Yeah. I've seen some good ones. All right. Uh, what, what about soaking your hides? Like, what if you get them really bloody? Should guys spray them down or? I would not. Um, okay. W water, moisture is not really a good thing. Right. I, just, just get it taken care of as far as cooling it down, you know, getting it in a freezer, getting yep. it in a cooler or something. Um, the blood and stuff, we, we don't have any trouble getting that out of them. And we, the right way. Yeah, the right way. And it, so nothing gets spoiled and the hide don't slip. We don't have any trouble doing that. So just leave that alone, you know. You know, if you want to take a picture of one or something and get the blood off or something, you know, take something and wipe it off. Sure. But. So, what, you ever had a guy come back and say that the deer's smaller than when he dropped it off? Um, no, no. 
No, I, I've I've had a I've had a few guys that come in and then they start looking at some of the other ones uh, and go, oh. well, I wish you sure it wasn't that one. Uh -huh. it's like, no, I don't think your tags on that one, dude. Going to the tax <laughs> is is a Humbling. big dose of humble pie. Oh, look at this guy. <laughs> I'm telling you, I see all the monsters and it's like, where are you getting these? Oh. Because yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I, I'll cry on your shoulder. Oh, later. but you, you know, it's like yeah. you, you just big some big badass bringing in your your deer, and you should be proud of it, it absolutely. But you get there and you find out real quick you're your 160 inch deer that you whacked <laughs> is about sitting in 20th in line on right. the on the big. And I'm scale. not passing that deer. I'm mean, no, for no. a reason, but Me it's neither. just like you're not the big dick on the block today. No, no. it happens. Um, the worst I've ever seen is just like getting started in the year. And have somebody come and it's the biggest thing they've ever killed, and it was the smallest thing in the room. Oh, dude, that would be a, that's hard. It's hard. It's because you can see probably see it come out. It's harsh. You can see it in their face. It's harsh. Yeah. Huh. It's harsh. You ever had a guy stiff you? Years ago, years ago, I did have. Um, that's when I started charging a deposit. Yep. I didn't used to charge a deposit. Wow. And I and I did have somebody stiff me. Yep. And then, so right after that, I started charging a deposit. And then I haven't had much trouble since. I've had some guys that, you know, gotten some financial binds or something. And what I tell everybody is, just be honest with me. If you're having trouble, we've all been there. Right. If you're having trouble, just call me. We'll work something out. Yeah. You know, just don't lie to me. Oh, I'm going to come tomorrow, and then I wait, you know, yeah. for you to show up. You, you got know, it on up. the wall. You're ready yep, for I'm him. ready to go. I, you know, I've done my work. I'm waiting to be paid, and, and oh, I'll be there when you have no intention. You know, don't do something like that. That's all I ask, you know. So, but I, we haven't had too much trouble. We've, we've been pretty fortunate. We've had a lot of loyal people, and, and they're real good at, you know, the ones that, um, that are hanging up here, um, we just put them up there a couple of days ago, and they'll be gone probably tomorrow or the next day. Oh, so, right. Yeah, I bet every weekend they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> right here. Saturday and Sunday, they're coming to get them. So. There's some hammers. That one is heavy. And that's an Illinois buck right there. I know it, that's a shotgun tag. Yep, it is. Yep, that was a, probably a second season deer. Yep. Or, I can't imagine either getting a call from a taxidermist and saying your deer head is ready and waiting like months and months and months to like go get it. Like, as soon as my taxidermist calls me, oh you, yeah, your priority lift. Everything just shifted down one. <laughs> and uh, yep, your uh, firstborn kid's getting born on Saturday. Hey, on Saturday morning at uh, 6 o'clock a.m., uh, my wife's going into labor at 8. Can I come pick up my mount? Yeah. That's, oh, uh, yeah. I'm not, that's what most guys, love, most people are so excited. Oh, yeah. They're so excited. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and that, that's just incredible. I mean, it's just, I just love it. I love everything about it. Oh, yeah. Being so, able to preserve that memory and give people joy like that, that's, that's the number one reason why I probably won't ever leave my job. It's just like you said, it's. It's that bond that you form with a kid and just being able to make them light up and making their day better. And that's the reason, I guess, why I'm, I like teaching kids. But uh, my, I have another question for you, Wayne. What separates the good from the great taxidermists, so in say, your say, opinion? The good from the what? The good from the great. The good from the great. The details. It, it's in the details. Um, and that's what I stress to Michael every day. Um, I think anybody could mount a deer head. But it's the details that set people apart. Um, you know, a lot of deer heads will look good from across the room. I want to I want to look good when you're standing nose to nose looking at them, up mm -hmm. the nose, behind the back. The seam should be laying down. It should be, you know, not again. Everything should fit. That's that's the difference. You know, that's Absolutely. my move. I think personally, for me, I agree 100 percent with what you're saying, but. On on the fact of what you said, I th you think a lot of guys can mount a deer. I think there's a lot in that service, in the fact like being punctual, being great communicators, understanding your customer, sympathizing with your customer. Like you said about being understanding, and then diving in. Not so like again, I'm emphasizing the fact of how much finesse you put into it, but going the extra step. How do you want your ears turned? How do you want your eyes turned? Let's where are you putting this in your room? These are questions that few no taxidermist has asked me before. Uh, so that's I, the details. I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's the details. That's, man, that's it. That is it. What, what detail, in your opinion, like when, whether it comes to the ears, the eyes, the nose, or the seams, or the fleshing, whatever it is, what detail do you think is the easiest to mess up? Like, what's the hardest part of your job when you're like, oh, boy, I'm on this thing. This um, is tough. I would say the eyes. 
Um, I've got it mastered down. I've got it down now. But, you know, the eyes on any mount, when you look at them, if they're not correct and they're not right, nothing else matters. You're right. Nothing else matters. They, they've got to be they You have be a perfect on. cape, everything. And then if the eyes are goofy, it's gone. It's all gone. And I think it's because what we draw to, like think about here, when we're looking at each other, we're looking at each other in the eyes. Yeah. Yep. So it's just naturally what we, we gravitate towards. And yep. man, it's like the front door of a house. You could have perfect sighting. <laughs> you got a janky ass front door. Yeah. You're like, what the, dude? I'm not ringing that bell. Yeah. I'm staying out of there. That's a, I, I totally make sense. Yeah. It's, 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 like I said, I've got it mastered, but it's everything. It has to be right. Yeah. It has to be right. It can't be janky. If it's janky, the rest of it doesn't matter. And now that's all. one of the last things you do on a mount, right? You, you typically pull the hide over the form, which there's a lot of prep on no, the form. No, see? I, I, do, I maybe do a little things a little backwards. No. I, uh, do them your way. I have the hide all done, right? And I've got, if you can see over here, I don't know if they can see or not, but I've got some forms with the antlers already on them. I fiberglass them in because that's more solid than like plaster of Paris or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I can take them screws out hit that, pop it off of there, okay? And then I get the cape, or I, I bring, first I get the eyes and I set the eyes. I've got everything, the angles and stuff where I want this deer to be looking. Yep. I'll set the eyes with my clay, right? Then I'll bring the cape out and I'll do the ears in the cape. I'll slide the cape over the form. And then I, usually if it's just a little neck stub, I'll just have a little cut. I won't have very much at all. I'll open that up and put the horns back in there and screw them down and they'll go right where they originally were. So I know they're on there yeah, straight. Yeah, because it's molded to I'll it. They're molded to it. It's all on there straight. Everything. I don't have to eyeball nothing. I've already done all that. And then, and then mount it. Put it all together. Put the eyes where they go, the nose, the lips, and then sew it up. You know? So a lot of guys will be, will be putting the antlers on there when they're mounting it. They got the cape on there and they're putting the antlers and they're screwing and trying to, well, to try to get everything exactly how you want it. It's hard. So I like to do it to begin with. And then, like I said, I can pop it off, put it right back on there, and it's right where I had it. Nothing moves. That's and a phenomenal real solid. idea. Yeah. That's why it doesn't. We don't. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. I feel like that's kind of atypical, right? Not a lot of people probably do it in that order. Probably not, no. Probably not. We're not normal around here. We're abnormal. But that's okay. It's a good thing. All yeah, right. We want to stand out. And yeah. speaking of that, there's a, there's a topic I want to bring up. Now, I know, full disclosure, like this is this is a people do it you know and and there's good tax numbers to do it but pets which i mean do you do pets no and i'll tell you why we're really good with what we do all right i can put attitude in a deer yeah all right what i can't do is put personality into something right you never know you can't do that yep that's why i stay away from that yeah you know i just I don't want anything to do with that. I mean, we're like I said, we're good at what we do, and we can make things look attitude. I can make your dog snarl, you know, when he goes, but it's not going to be the personality. Yeah, your dog it's not going to be woofy he, snarl. Or, yeah, or whatever. yeah, it's you can't do that. Huh? That's. I just it's some. Is there any? Do you get requests for it? Oh yeah, you do. I do. Yeah, I've had people call me, cats, dogs. So then, is there somebody? Do you recommend them? Do you have a guy like this is my go-to pet guy? No, I just tell them just what I told you. Yeah. And I tell them I would really reconsider. I would really think about it hard because your dog's gone. He's not coming back. Right. And yeah. So I try to avoid that. I try to stay away from I don't blame you. Yeah. You know, I just, it's, it's something we had, we had a caller, uh, listener call-in podcast. And coincidentally, one of the guys who was really amped up to be here. Do you remember where, was his name? Drew Gann. Was his name? Mm -hmm. Where was he from? Tennessee, Georgia, Georgia, mm -hmm. down south. And he said he's he works for a taxidermy firm down there. And he said it's actually a lot of their business. He said it's because there's, like I I think it's not many people do it. No, no, so there they, wouldn't be. You know. Yeah, it, I mean, if they're that's packing what you did, Mr. It, Kittens on dry ice and sending them down. It it would be huge, but I, I just I can't see it. I would. Yeah. I just can't see it. Yeah. I. Does Delta Drew, McKenzie good make for like you a, for doing it. I just, cat form? Like, yeah. how, where do you get your form oh, at yeah. when you're doing like Does a like Delta a, McKenzie a have like a German Shepherd, like female form? Or? No, they got coon dog forms, though. I've seen those. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have those. But yeah, a lot of that stuff would have to be casted off the animal, you know, to get, to get what you're wanting. Oh, my God. Because, yeah, people don't make normal cat forms and things like wow. that. Yeah. 
Wow. Shoulder mounted yeah. cat. A shoulder mounted cat. <laughs> well, that's what the, the one person that called me, it's like, what do you want me to do? Like have it hanging with his claws out and like you can hang it on the drapes. And then when you're cleaning, pick oh it up, and hang it over here. I yeah. mean, what, what do you want? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just. What would you do? Like, what, like you said, where, what do you do with it? Just put him in his back in his doggy bed? I don't know. Lay it on the edge of the couch. Uh, huh. I don't know. It just ain't the same. No, no, it's not. Yeah. And that would just be a really hard, like you said, you got, they have an expectation of a living animated being and you're trying to recreate it from something you never, you ever, never t- see, never knew. Yeah. 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 And then talking about what, what you said earlier, like the excitement from people that come to the door, like, are they excited to come back and get there? Or are they yeah. sad? Are they going to cry? Oh Yeah totally different like interaction there when they come to pick up like their dead we'll just stay away from that oh. yeah we'll just not feel that you way. should you should prank michael and tell him like hey this we got to do this and like just totally give him the go if he doesn't listen to this podcast but like say this is the next step in your but we could do, we could do that <laughs> we could do that yeah. and just we'd see, wanna be, he, we'd see wanna, how far he'd take it we'd want to have a camera kind of hit oh, so yeah. he couldn't see so oh, we could see God. his reaction we could set him up we'll have like we See could have like mount himself up a wiener dog, or we could, we'll just totally not. We won't have him mount it. No, no, no. No, but like we'll just we'll make have him like, act like we're gonna. Yeah, right. you tell him I took this call from this lady. She's she really, really loves needs this cat. It. Yeah, we, yeah, you know this. This is good for you, and like we could have Brenda, like our mother-in-law, call and she's like, "Oh, that would be. Perfect. Oh my god, that'd be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we gotta do just, that. He'd be sweating bullets. Oh, big time." <laughs> He'd be pacing. There'd be a <laughs> there'd be a rut over there in the cement uh, where he's walking back oh and forth. Oh gosh. Uh, well, what's next? What do we what do we got next? Um, I I just wanted to know like if there was a taxidermy, uh, a taxidermist rather, and a and a guy standing next to one another, looking at a fully finished deer head. What details do you think a taxidermist would be able to spot? Versus a normal guy, you know, this normal guy who just yeah. got his deer done is like, oh my God, I'm so happy with this, but it, but it's got some things wrong with it. What are some things that a taxidermist I would be able to see as a professional in the field? More like you, I'm, when you yeah. walk up to somebody else's work, you mm-hmm. know, and yep. it's hard, it's probably hard not to analyze it, yep. right? Because it of what you do, yes. but what do you key on first? What do you, the, the number one thing I see that is all screwed up are the ears. Number one thing curled on the edges um if they use the bonded ear method they're not uniform they're kind of thick and lumpy kind of they're not uh-huh. real not good shape but like i said the eyes they're the first thing you look at i mean but you can look at them in just a second and know if they're right and then from there i go to the ears and then i go to the nose and then i'm looking at the mouth i just kind of like you said i kind of analyze them you know yeah it's part of the business that's yeah, just right. what you do right yeah okay uh, that kind of rounds us out on that. Are you guys uh, ready for some would you rather's? Oh yeah, this is like, this is Grant saying he does this uh, Sunday dinner. So I do this for, all the time. I don't know if you knew this yet or not, Wayne, but like Grant is engaged to my wife's sister, and Grant and I have known each other since I was like knee high to a duck. We introduced each other's brothers, so it's kind of like cool. Like Matt and Jesse are gonna give you shit for saying that. Uh-huh. They can't. I Garrett have all these saying. like yep. Garrettnisms or whatever. And uh, so every every Me Sunday we go over to our in laws and we have Sunday dinner and Grant has like these and some of them are very very triple X rated and some of them are funny so our guests we always give him would you rather's so he's gonna would give, I rather so I get a would you rather oh you're gonna get a uh, couple of them oh, many could be rich okay so uh, we'll start off Tane so would I, you rather uh, would you rather mount an elk or an antelope point an elk why I think they're they're prettier. Really? My really antelope do. mounts are my favorite mounts that I have. Really? You think an elk is prettier than an antelope? I, I do. The a pelt. big old bull with the mane sticking out. And oh, man. I, I do. I think they're awesome. So somebody better get one here. In dude, a don't put... Months, I've already got the pressure here, dude. Yeah. I hope. I hope. Yeah. I like Bigger is better sometimes. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that moose is... Yeah. Uh, I almost... This sounds crazy, but I've never geez. seen an elk in person. There's a potential that the first elk I ever see would be the one I shoot. Oh, that would be awesome. Isn't that crazy? That'd be cool. I was telling my really buddy cool. Shane Jones that he lives in Colorado, and he's like, you've never seen a live elk? I'm like, no. Never been to Yellowstone or any of those places? No. Nope. Oh, dude. I know it. 
Last uh, last summer, one of my teaching buddies and I, we every summer we go out to Wyoming backcountry camping. And uh, last summer it was like, I don't know, 6.45 a.m. We were in the Bighorns Mountain Range in Wyoming, like north central Wyoming. And I hear this bugle just rip that yep. wakes me up out of my tent. And I zip open the fly of my tent, you know, because we're in there way deep. We're on public land at like 15 or 20 miles in. And I hear this thing. I'm like, oh, that sounded like a bugle. And he did it again. And I look down this valley. And you could see for miles out there if you're at a high point of elevation. And there's this, this huge bull just and 40 other elk just like in a herd migrating through this basin. And it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my oh, whole yeah. life. You're going to awesome. have a you got me blast. Beat. It's going to be so cool. So what's the next one you got? Uh, my next question is, would you rather flesh a deer hide or cape a deer? Uh, cape a deer. Why is that? A lot easier, faster. Um, the flesh and the hide. And, you know, so every now and then I cut my fingers. When you're fleshing? And I'm more apt to cut my fingers when I'm fleshing a deer than when I'm caping a deer. Which is, it's, <laughs> it, I've, I've, you know, known just barely enough to be dangerous, not even enough to do anything like you. But the fleshing process is a wheel that has a, like a rolled edge. Yes. Right? Yep. So to call it sharp really isn't right. I mean, but it, it spins. Yeah. And so you're like pulling, is it like nicking your knuckles when you're. It sh- is sharp. Well, it. it if you get your hand in it, it makes these big marks across your hand. Like, right like here. those scars you got? Yeah. Yeah, you, you need stitches and things. So it's, it is sharp. It's very sharp. Um, you've got a steel, that, and I always sharpen it. I might sharpen it two times when I'm working on a cape. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm keeping it really sharp because the sharper it is, it's just like a sharp knife. It's easier. Yeah. It goes easier. So when you're fleshing, it's easy. If it's dull, you're pulling hard on it, and you're stretching you know, it and yeah. stressing the hide. So it's, it's, it's a lot easier to use a sharp tool than a, than a dull one. Huh. But it, it's dangerous. It can get away from you. You got to really pay attention. Yep. You know. Yeah. Okay. This next one isn't a would you rather. It's just a, a opinion. So, what's your favorite pose for a whitetail, Wayne? My favorite pose. I would say uh, some sort of open mouth aggressive deer, like when they're fighting or something. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you have I that like like panting, that. breathing hard kind of thing. Yeah, I like I like doing off the wall stuff. I mean. You know, like I said, we can do the old school eyes forward, whatever. I like the off the wall stuff. They're, those deer, they just get my blood pumping. So I like to kind of throw that throw that in there when I'm doing them. One of the coolest mounts is those fighting bucks you have at Easy Living. Oh yeah, those are like, like 20, locked up, yeah. twenty five years old, yeah. And they're just mouth open, and they're yeah. they're you can tell they're just brawling. Yeah, yep, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. I love that kind of stuff. So all, right behind you, this is that that would be considered a wall pedestal, right? Correct. I yeah. think that, to in my opinion, those are like some of the sharpest mounts out there. They Sh- do look good. Shows a little bit of the shoulder off. I feel like you get an angle of the deer that's like really impressive and shows them off really well. Yeah. I don't. Are, are those getting more popular? They are getting more popular. There's a lot of people see them, and once they see them, yeah, they really like them. You know. I just, I've got one and it just stands out on the wall. Yep. You just, it, you immediately look at they it. They do. And like I said, it's because you, you see so much shoulder and the, they're really turning. You see a lot of definition. Um, they do really look good when they're mounted. They're a little tougher to mount, you know, than just a standard pose because they're twisted so hard and everything. But they look good when they're done. Yeah. 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 I myself, I like the backing. I've got two deer done like that one white tail and one antelope. Two antelope, actually, now. And I like the backing, like how you can look behind the shoulder and like see a piece of leather or see a piece of like cool decorative material. Like I just think, like Garrett said, that's that's one of my favorite poses. But other than that, I just like the semi sneak. I feel like the the uh, full sneak. I know a couple deer that, you know, people that have a full sneak and I just my ceilings aren't that high. And I kind of like everything to be like uniform. So pipe dream, I can have a big vaulted ceiling with like. 12 white tails that are uh, left turns on one side and another 12 on the, the other side that are, right th- it's that are right turns that just look perfect. But then I have to, you know, so then that's my goal. But I like that semi-sneak look. I don't think it's too high to like an upright, and it's not too low like a full sneak. That's If somebody I says, semi-sneak. what do you think? 
That's my go-to. Yeah. That's my go-to. That's my favorite. Mount. I hate the full sneak because you've got to hang them somewhere. You don't run into them because oh, they yeah. stick out. They yep. stick straight out. Um, but the semi sneak, that's if somebody says, "What are you, what do you think?" I'll lean them that way. That's right. what I like. Yeah, too. I will lean them that way as well. That there was a guy that got a full sneak mount at our uh, show not this summer but last summer named Jake Reffitt, and it was like a twenty two to twenty four inch wide deer like really slob. Wide. Widest ear, super wide, and his ears were like, his ears were pinned back like he was fighting, and it was a semi sneak, and that deer was just like, holy smokes! Like I thought that that was a per- the perfect pose. Isn't it funny like that? You know, how you see you can see a deer's antlers, and you're like, it would look really good at this, yeah. on this form. Yes. Versus others. Yeah, and that's what's so neat about it. Like I said, you can kind of design how you want. It isn't just a you know a cardboard cutout you can design it how you want you can give it the attitude that you want yeah like the like that it's called what's it called like a, a turned down head like when a deer's like looking like this yeah they got their head down an aggressive pose yeah head down i think and usually they roll their eyes real hard too yeah you know? i think it looks incredible like that when you've got a deer with like really long tines like a really superior tine length if you turn them down like that and it really accentuates the fact that like yeah. yeah, these G2s are 14 Look inches long. Babies. Yeah, yeah. so I really like that one for uh, that circumstance. So this one's hard. Uh, this is for both of you, so we're cracking okay. into the regular ones now. Oh, that do are I need not to get my seatbelt on? Taxidermist focus. This is, this is the best one that I thought of today. <clears throat> so there's two bucks in a field. One is a three-year-old 10-point. Um, so when we're thinking about a three-year-old 10-point, if you had to, you know, Nail my nail 135. My. 10. I was going 140. Yeah, let's go 140. They eat better that's, over here in Iowa. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I was uh, gonna say okay. about 140. You know, somewhere yeah, between okay. somewhere between what you said and what you said. Okay, so you can both have your cake and eat it too. All right. One's three. He's a 10 point though. Uh, his front leg is visibly broken, so he's not putting any pressure on it. And let's go to the nth degree because our buddy Jeff, he shot a deer with a broken like shoulder. Like last year when we cleaned him out, he was hobbling on three legs like the whole time Jeff hunted him. Huge deer, incredible deer. You can watch it on our YouTube channel. It's uh, going to be rolling out really soon. It's called the Hunt for Dump on 19 acres. But let's say that the deer is, uh, you know, was hit by a car, all right, in this in this scenario. I know it's all hypothetical, but you can tell that it's broken and he's not putting any any weight on it at all. The other deer out in the field is a nine-year-old buck, and you've watched him for six years. You have not yet got an arrow or a slug or a muzzleloader bullet in him. He's harsh. Um, it That deer would be your 15th biggest buck all time on your wall, so he's not even close to being number one. Which one of those two deer would you shoot, given what I just told you, Wayne? He, he would not even make the top 15 uh he would be he's number nine. 15 he's on his way down he would be number 15 so we're talking about the epitome of like a, a nice framed eight pointer that's spindly and real shallow tines yeah i'd shoot the boogered one you'd shoot the one I'd with shoot the, the i'd shoot the boogered one okay yeah why is that i don't know i'm kind of a pet guy and it's not, I mean, I, I eat them, don't get me wrong. I didn't mm-hmm. get fat eating salad. But <laughs> I don't, I think he needs to be taken out of there. I mean, why let him like suffer? ethically? Ethically. Why, why let him suffer? Do you I think mean, he would die with a broken leg? It would have to, it depends on how bad it is. Because, you know, I've, I've shot one that got hit by a car. We called him Gimpy. It was stiff. <laughs> and he lived. He lived. Whoa. He oh, made yeah. it. Yeah. But but then the next year he got a little bigger and I did shoot him. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. but I don't know if he's not putting weight on it. He's in bad shape. That's bad. I mean, you know, if he's trying Gonna to put him out of his misery. Yeah. If he's trying <laughs> to put some weight on it, that's one thing. But if he's not putting any weight on it, he's in bad shape. You right. Know? He's got a rough road. God, that's rough. a tough one, man. Because you road. have like the the high road, the ethical road that you took, Wayne. <laughs> and then you have. Well, like... see, I'm not used to shooting big bucks like you, so it's really oh, not a big come issue. Come on. Yeah. Well, I mean. Well, it's not a big buck, though. But right, it's a right. Deer you but, got a lot of history. It's number with. sixteen, maybe. Yeah. You know, come on now. I don't. Ugh. I'm probably gonna shoot the old buck. You are. You're gonna I, shoot the old I one. am, and I'm probably gonna catch hell from people. But like, there's a chance he could live. And, there is a chance. And I mean, I don't know if I'd ever. 
But let me ask a nine year old deer. Probably not. But let me ask you this from, from this viewpoint. Somebody else comes along and sees that deer hobbling. Um, granted, they might be like you. Oh, maybe got hit by a car or something. But what's what's the one thing a lot of people think when they see a deer that's wounded running around? Some a hunter wounded. A him. hunter wounded it. Yeah, you're that's right. That's the number you're one dead, thing. That's the true. number one thing people tend to go to, and it might they you know they they have a harsh life dodging cars, trucks, you know fighting fighting. Oh yeah, yeah they'll kill each other. So, yeah. but but that's another thing I look at too is if there's one out there running around that's injured that's just an opportunity for somebody to say hey that probably was a hunter or something you know somebody that's not educated or doesn't know yep i'm gonna get it out of there. i like that response i did not there. even consider that no. that's yeah that's a hell of a good thought that's right taking there. one for the team for the better of like all everybody outdoorsmen yeah god dang it wayne you had a one on me sorry ah, jesus that's, that's a hard one though man because like a like a the three-year-old 10 point i made this up just because i i figured in my head that that deer would quote unquote score like when did people talk about big deer like what's your biggest deer we're talking about the biggest antler deer not the oldest deer not the maybe the heaviest deer sometimes right after you talk about the deer with the biggest antlers you know what you right. know what i'm saying but i i feel like a three-year-old 10 point would outscore your uh nine-year-old buck you know just because it's because of his extreme age yeah i see a but, lot of the older bucks we've got we got two in here this year that were eight and a half and both of them had held their mass real well and the spread looked the same as prior years oh really but it seems like the tine length shrinks a little bit you know what i mean mm -hmm. but the the one he had had pictures of him since he was two and a half wow and he's always been wide and every year you can just see it's him and he's eight and a half now and from last year he never did nothing so probably next year he was tapering. His, his tines are probably going to be a little shorter. I bet he'd still be wide, but I bet his tines would shrink. Yeah. See, that's what's cool. He gets to see everything. Everything. I mean, from young giants to old freaking war horses. I oh, mean, I've seen some. The neatest one was a guy called, and I got a big six-pointer. Have you ever seen a big six-pointer? Well, I hadn't until I seen that one. It was like 26 inches wide. 26? Oh, 26 man. inches 26? wide. 26? Huge oh. around. And six points, brow tines and brow tines and, and G2s. Holy. And that's it. And it, <laughs> what he was was just older than dirt. And he was a monster. I mean, he was a monster. But that's when he come in, I'm like, yeah, that's it's a big, big six pointer. See, yeah, like that, I'll give that to you. Would you rather? Would you rather shoot a booner or that buck? Oh, that. I don't know that buck. That I'd buck, shoot that deer. Oh, I'm telling you, that that, How, that like, deer would be 26 inches wide. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you. Buddy. Garrett and I were just talking about this the other day. We feel like when we're looking at our own trophy walls, at least. You got a big eight. You got house, a big ten. Everybody's got a big eight. Everybody's Everybody. got a big ten. And some people are lucky enough to shoot a quote-unquote big 12. But not a lot of people got a big six. Right yeah. I mean, not house. nothing like that. Not nothing like that. something like that. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Gosh. I had never seen anything like that. I hadn't. You know, oh, a big six pointer. <laughs> sure, yeah, okay, bring it over. And you bet shit. Yeah, I did. Whoa, <laughs> hello. Bring that right on in here. We got a spot for that. Uh, so, God, well, man. the uh, uh, the thing about the hobbling deer though is, I don't know if you got, you've seen it, Wayne, but I've I follow a show. They're one of my favorite hunting shows, and they videotaped a three legged deer once. Yeah, sure. I you think know, oh, they so can I, make so it. So I think it could definitely make it, which which makes it even harder, you know. But like, I uh, I'm I'm proud with you, Garrett. I'd I'd probably take the I'd probably take the history route. But if we let a deer slip on us till age nine, then we probably suck. So <laughs> it happens, man. <laughs> it happens, man. Yeah. <laughs> Die of old age. So um, our next one. Uh, oh, what's another. your favorite way to eat venison, Wayne? Favorite way to eat venison. Yeah, as a you know, tacos, uh, spaghetti, steaks, blah, blah, blah. Deer kebabs. Deer kebabs. Deer kebabs. What do you put on your kebabs? A little chunk of onion, a little round onion, deer kebab, pepper, um, tomato, another deer, you know, just some other vegetables, whatever you want. Put it on the grill. Drink a beer while it's cooking. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, buddy. Man. I yeah. did it with pineapples once, and it turned out really good. Pineapple, pineapple, pepper, Turkey and venison. So, you know, pineapple, deer chunk, pepper, 
turkey. Well, that does sound good. That was good. pretty darn good. Yeah, that does sound good. Do you but, process all your own stuff or you take it in? Um, we bring it in and we, uh, we vacuum seal like the loins, any roast or something we want. We chunk the rest up, and then if we want to have sausage or burger yeah. made, we yeah. just take that up there and have it done that yep. way. Yep, yep, yep. So it's a lot easier. I mean, you know, we can do it, do it really quick. And um, there's some years we shoot quite a few deer. We shoot um, inside Muscatine City limits, too. So there's, you know, we get quite a few deer. Again. Yeah. So. so you got lots of sausage. Summer. Yeah, we got some good sausage. All right. What about right. you? What, what? Yeah, your favorite way to eat venison. Uh I have two favorites. Like, we do this mm. thing. Okay, He said fine. one. Come fine, on now. Right. you got to follow the rules. You're right. Uh, I'll just say it. Uh, Italian venison. I had another one, but it's, it's, we don't do it nearly as often. So Italian venison is just like uh, Italian beef. We use venison roast, and the recipe is so ridiculously easy. So easy. Uh, I, I actually just kind of started making it in college. Poor college kid. Could kill deer. Right. So I could eat. <laughs> Cheaper. And, uh, and it's like the recipe is a venison roast, uh, one of those like 59 cent tubes of Italian seasoning. You know, you can buy like it's called Chicago style gardenera, gardenera, gardenera. Something uh, like that. Yeah. And pepperoncini peppers. You throw it and, of course, a beer. You put it in a crock pot, let it sit, cook for like 10 hours, it shred it, and it's the best thing ever, man. Wow. That I does mean, sound it's, good. you put it on a hoagie with. It's really good. It with. Uh, you know, some mozzarella cheese, and you can't beat it, dude. You know, a lot of people don't realize how good venison is. Yo, man. My wife, before she met me, would never eat it. You know, people would give it to her, and she'd be like, eh. Well, then when she saw how I treated it, and you know, yeah. and how I took care of it, she started cooking it, and she's like, wow, yeah. this is really a good piece of meat. And like, yeah, honey, I've been telling you. There's so many people that you get, they get snake bit. They get snake bit. Because some good old boy at work cooked up a, you know, a, a slab of meat, and like you said, he, who knows how he processed it, how he prepared it. Yep. I can make a T-bone taste like a turd, you know. So right. just imagine what you could do to a deer steak. Yeah, or, you know, get hair in it or something like that. Yeah. That's a yeah. big turnoff. Big time. Big turnoff. That would, that would turn anybody. Yep. Um, but, yeah, my wife, she's, she's all over it now. She's right. like, oh, what you got? What you got? What you got for Does me? she come out in the shop very often? Does yeah, she... she was out here earlier. I think you guys scared her off. Oh, maybe. wow. Yeah. 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 Probably Grant's open show. I think it was. Sandals. She saw the cooler. And, well, I got sandals. Don't be knocking that. Oh, you, you at least have mandals Tee? on. I do. But I've got a, I've got a rattlesnake belt. You do, <laughs> which is pretty badass. I got a snake badass. belt that I caught. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a snake belt. We'll work on that. Uh, we'll go every March. You guys would love it. Going on that venison thing, every year, like, it's typically, like, towards the end of deer season when we're winding down, um, I'll bring, I'll just make a pile of deer jerky, you know, like, pounds and pounds of it, and I'll bring it into my kids, and I teach in a school that is not rural, it's highly urban, there's, most of my kids have never seen a wild deer, a wild deer with antlers unless it's running through their backyard at night or across you know, scavenges some garbage or eating a rose in somebody's yard or, you know, let alone eating deer. Right. And so I'll bring them in deer sausage that Garrett and I make and jerky. And they're, they're just like floored. They're like, I've never had this before. This is incredible. Like, so this was kind of cool. Two years ago, I had a kid that goes, Hey, I just started, uh, I just started checking you guys out on social media. Where can I buy a hunting license? Oh, wow. You know, it's this kid from, like, the inner city, like, uh, that's that's never been around it at all. Just because, like, 95%, like, Alan Yates, if you're listening to this, Alan, you are one in a million because most people get started in hunting from a family friend or a family, or member. A family member. Yep. And yeah, I would say right. there is a small amount of people that come by it by their own design. And this kid, you know... Buzz his heart. He went and took his hunter safety course, and this will be his first fall hunting. Like oh, this really? fall, he's doing it. He's cool. doing it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I hope we see him. That'd yeah. be a good one. No so, kidding, right? So that's That'd be pretty awesome. cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy how lots of people, you know, you just haven't hadn't ever haven't ever tried it, or like you said, they got snake bit. Like they eat, they ate that one chunk of steak that was like at their family's blah, blah, blah party, and it's like lukewarm, and it didn't have any seasoning on it. It's just a piece of deer meat. Yeah. They even tasted like a butterfly like deer steak chop fried on the grill, like a country fried steak, but a deer loin, yeah. or like a good sausage with cheese in it or some 
awesome jerky or a kebab or anything like that. And so yep. it's pretty crazy how that all works. But it is. Um, that's pretty much all the would you rather's I have for him, unless you got any more oh, questions for nothing. the. I thought I was ready to put Garrett. my seatbelt on. I thought uh, I was kind of scared a little bit. Uh, he probably uh, he can, probably toned it back a little bit when the I wondered, next one. I wondered we'll, if he was a little skittish. We'll uh, we'll pepper you pretty good, but uh, no. All I can say in closing is, seriously, man, we're super excited. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Uh, I mean, if I if I do have an opportunity at an elk. It's going to be pretty cool. I get to bring you the first. I would love it, to see like it. It's like my bucket list animal, too. Is it? Yeah. Good. I mean, so I'm, we're going to Idaho. It's, it's a really, really good unit. I mean, it's. How, it's now, how long are, are you going to be out there? For seven days. For seven days. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'm going with a bow, and then Jeff is coming with us. And so I'll be hunting with a bow, and then he'll be hunting with a rifle. So it'll be like kind of worth sharing the hunt, if you will. Right, right. But I, I think it should. I mean, the guy sounds pretty optimistic. Cool. So. That'll be awesome. I don't know. Well, you get to see some beautiful country anyway, whatever happens. You know? Yeah. 22-hour drive. <laughs> oh, yeah. I personally, though, we, we talk about that, Wayne. What's your, what's your thoughts on this? Because you, you, I totally agree with you. Like, when I go out camping, I soak it in, and I bring – every time I go out camping, I try to bring three books with me. The, My Side of the Mountain. Have you ever read My Side of the Mountain? It's nope. about this kid that uh, is sick of the city life, and he packs up and moves away from his family. And there's three books, and it and it goes into his adventures. And he's like 11 or 12 years old, and it's awesome. And I read those books, and I take in the scenery and everything like that. But Garrett and I have talked about this before at great length. So Matt, um, one of our best mutual friends, you know Matt Bartlett, he went out elk hunting. It would have been four seasons ago, and it was 5,500 bucks. Which is, you know, that's right in there. I would say that's in the middle. Yeah, you know, there's so. cheaper elk hunts than that, but there's more expensive elk hunts than that. A lot that. more expensive. Elk yeah, hunts. New Mexico. But and stuff. he didn't see an elk. Didn't see an elk. Didn't see one. So, so my 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 take on that is like a backcountry camper. I'm like, I can go to multiple states in the United States, lower 48, and camp for the cost of free 99. You know what I'm saying? Right. So a fifty five hundred dollar nature walk kind of sounds like a kick in the shorts to me. So personally, I really hope that you get one. I do too. When you go I, out there, I hope you do too. Yeah, I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I think that maybe that's the young, I don't know, piss ants and Garrett and I. But whenever people are just like, I don't know. I don't know if this opinion is shitty or not. I don't. I don't really know if it makes me a bad person or us. But we've had the discussion before. It's like. There will be people that will talk to us about, like, well, we watched the sunrise come up, and we had so many good times in the blind and blah, blah, blah. Well, I wanted to say, like, the best memories that you and I have, I'll tell you what happened that day. Yeah, yeah, a, exactly. A big deer died. A big-ass deer in the bed of our truck driving somewhere with beers in the cooler and somebody to show with and take pictures of. Yep, you know what I'm yep. saying? There's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> Man. And it's, it's expensive hunting out west and such. Oh, That's what yeah. a lot of the hunts I've done have been self-guided. Yeah. Just for that reason because you can go do that three or four times for the price of what you're going to pay an outfitter to right. go through. You know? Right. And you've been yeah. really successful. There's a caribou. There's a giant moose. I mean, and countless other things that you've oh, yeah. done. Yeah, we have fun. And by the way, you guys got to go to Texas with us and catch snakes. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you'd Jesus. love it. Yeah, we'll see. That gives me the heebie-jeebies. I hate snakes and sharks. I don't know which one of those two animals I hate more on earth. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anything you want to add, Wayne, before we shut her down? No, I think I'm with you. I think this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Um, I think great things in the future for all of us. All right. Well, don't forget, hit him with that code real quick one more time. Uh, yeah, so again, our launch party last Friday in July in 2021, you can use the code BFD21 um, at Tompkins Taxidermy. If you message him or tell him that when you bring it in, that we sent you, etc., and he will knock $50 off the original price of $550, bringing you down to a $500 shoulder-mounted whitetail that you can pick up at our show in front of 1,500 to 2,500 people at the Adler Theater in a packed house in the end of July. So that's pretty awesome that you can pick your deer up in six or less months, depending on when you guys you know, shoot it. Um, super fast turnaround and uh, fifty dollars off of your next whitetail mount. So BFD two one. Um, the other discount codes that we have for you. So we have a twenty percent off code for 
code blue and includes free shipping as well any item site-wide so hop in the inner circle to see that we have a 25 percent off code for any piece of badlands gear uh site-wide and we will give you that if you remember the inner circle again that's our facebook group it's a private group that garrett started and we have a 35 percent off coupon for anything site-wide outdoor edge cutlery so you guys can get yourself a really nice replaceable blade knife oh, to, i love those knives oh yeah. they're awesome i love they them. are really awesome and uh they say they hold a good edge and the beauty is you never spend or waste any time sharpening a knife like garrett and i bought a knife sharpener i bought that wicked edge knife sharpener for you what like your 20th birthday it's been a long time like 10, 10 years, years ago. ago yeah and uh We've been using that thing forever, but ever since we got into that, no need to waste those replaceable blade knives. Yeah, yeah and they're and, awesome. And you know, you can take that on your hunt when you go. Put six blades in your pouch, and you're set, and, and you're good to go. No That's the only knife you yeah. need. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and so we've got all those discount codes. Hopefully, a Moultrie one on the way coming here really soon. There is. Cool. Um, Every Thursday in 2020, we're releasing a Throwback Thursday episode on our YouTube channel. So you should go subscribe to our YouTube channel because that's kind of the way we're shifting things as our company. We're going to start dropping all of our content on YouTube. Um, other than obviously our big announcement we made at the launch party is that we're going to be uh, appearing on Amazon Prime here um, within the next couple months. Uh, it does take a long time f to get crap up there as I'm starting to figure out, but it will be up on Amazon Prime. So that's going to be awesome. So you can watch it worldwide on Amazon. And then every Wednesday, we're doing something that we've never done before. And that is we're going uh, live, essentially. So we're going to bring you a new live hunt every week. So when we kill a buck, you guys are going to be able to find out about it that following Wednesday, all deer season long when Garrett and Jeff and Chris go on their elk hunt, um, wherever life takes us in october november december january you guys are going to be able to see that happen basically in real time as quickly as at least i can edit it um our new series and this is the big one um we've developed 12 years combined trail camera history and that's uh matt jesse garrett and i and over the course of the last 12 years we've got some amazing whitetails on video pictures and we dissect 13 different case studies of bucks and we look at the trail camera studies on each one so when this episode airs we will be on episode number seven which is uh i'm not going to spoil anything for you but it may or may not be the biggest deer that we've ever killed with a bow and how we use trail cameras to do it um so you guys will want to check out our YouTube channel for that. Again, that's uh, Moultrie's Image Autopsy, and that's on our YouTube. So thank you again for listening to the HuntCast. That's pretty much it. To stay linked into what we're doing and to get all of our discount codes, join the Last Breath Inner Circle. That is our Facebook group um, that you made, Garrett. Uh, other than that, thank you for listening. Anybody got anything else? Don't waste it. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody.